embryogenesis. Embryogenesis. Whoops, that should be a Y. Embryogenesis. There we go. And what we call germ layers. That's kind of where we wanna we wanna go. So that's a big word that basically talks about how an embryo forms and the process it undergoes to produce what we call germ layers. Germ layers are essentially just specialized tissue layers. And these specialized tissue layers develop into all the different parts of plants and animals. Okay. Uh, so essentially, we all know what, uh, how an embryo begins, right? We have uh, an egg cell. And the egg cell is fertilized by a sperm cell, which uh, interacts with the egg cell. And what's interesting is the sperm cell really doesn't um, combine with the egg cell. It just sort of attaches and it sends its DNA inside. And that then joins up with the DNA of the egg cell. And so we get this diploid double chromosome kind of thing. So the sperm cell is not actually joining with the egg, it's only giving the egg its DNA. Very little of the other parts of the sperm cell are passed on into the egg. So when you're done, let me just write sperm cell over here. When you're done, you essentially have um, what we call a fertilized egg cell. A fertilized egg cell. In other words, it has now the sperm DNA added to it. And we call that the zygote. So that's the word we use to describe that. In biology, everything's about words that describe all the different things. So we know this much. Now, what has to happen is the zygote has to now begin its journey towards growing into some kind of more complex organism. So the zygote... is still just a simple cell, it begins to divide. So uh, we see the zygote sort of divide into two cells, mitosis, right? Mitosis. And then a little while later, it will divide into a blob of four cells. And this process will, will continue this dividing until we get to basically uh, a big ball of cells Okay, so what I'll do is draw sort of a big ball here, like this. So far, these cells are pretty much all identical, right? They're all identical. Now, there are some terms that, that we use to describe all these things. I'm trying to decide how much detail to cover here. Um, maybe what I'll do is kind of go into some of these um, details, but then at the end summarize the key points that we want to get out of this, okay? Now, at this point, there's some interesting things that happen. Cell specialization essentially begins to occur, and that means that inside the cells, there's DNA, right? The instructions of the, of, for the cells. And this DNA contains all kinds of instructions for doing all the different things that cells need to do. And so uh, what happens, in, in a way that we're still not 100% clear on, is that certain genes get turned on and certain genes get turned off. And so different combinations of genes direct the cell towards doing different jobs, right? Becoming specialized. And as the cells specialize, um, maybe we'll put here, cells begin to specialize. As they begin to specialize, or another word that we use is differentiate. Okay, you'll sometimes see the word differentiate, which means to, to sort of uh, become different from each other. Differentiate. Those two words kind of mean the same thing. Um, that begins to happen. And then, of course, the process can go in many different ways from this point on. 
Uh, if we look at plants, oops, plants are vastly different from animals at this point because um, if we look at that blob of cells in plants, what it does is it basically divides into or separates into two major types of cells at first, what we call apical cells and basal cells. Oh, come on, smart board. You can be smarter than that. Why? Why jump? Ugh. Try green. I guess green will work. So what we get are a blob of cells. I'm going to draw them in different colors to show them beginning to differentiate. Okay. And the, the cells on the top are referred to as the apical, apical cells. These are um, apex. That's what the word comes from, the apex or the point, right, the tip. So remember that. These cells, they're called this because they're going to form the tips of the growing parts of the plant. And then we have what are called the basal cells down here. And essentially, what happens is the apical cells will develop into, let me just draw another little arrow. We'll kind of carry on down here like this. The apical cells to specialize into, do you remember what those specialized growing cells were called in plants? Meristems. So what happens is you get... Um, you get a, a division of meristems, okay? Uh, I wonder if I can find a picture of this. Uh, let me just have a look here. Maybe not easily, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll maybe put some pictures up after that give you a sort of, uh, give you the idea that you can, we, we can look at them at the end, okay? And so what it does is it begins to sort of split. So I'm going to draw this little split in it. Okay. And then the basal cells sort of underneath. And so it begins to split open. And then it sort of basically goes in two directions. Um, this is going to become what we call the, this top piece is going to become the shoot meristem, which is going to grow upwards, right, and form the stem of the plant and the leaves and all that structure. And the other one is going to grow sort of downwards as the root meristem. So what we get is a splitting of the cells. Now the cells are also growing and dividing at this point. Okay. Um, So we get the, uh, I'm going to write this small, what will be the root meristem, and the shoot meristem. And uh, this will develop into the roots and shoots of the plant. And so what happens, of course, is the plant, what's interesting about the plant is that it's all solid. It's, it's a solid structure of cells. And that's kind of one of the main things that distinguishes it from animals. It's a solid structure of cells that develops. Let's go a little further down here. Okay. And so uh, as the cells grow, the picture gets bigger and bigger. So we can kind of move out of the microscopic and into the macroscopic. And so the plant basically has you know, this solid ball of cells, and down here is the root, and here is the shoot, meristem, which eventually, you know, grows into the solid plant. Uh, here's the plant, here's some, some ground, you know, and then we have the shoots growing upwards, 
and the roots. I'll draw the roots in a slightly different color just to differentiate them. The roots going downwards, roots and shoots, right? What's interesting, though, is plants grow from the tips. Their growth is from the tip of the root or the tip of the shoot, right? That's basically how plants grow. And, the, and these tips are specialized. Actually, they're, they're unspecialized cells called meristems that become specialized, right? They're like stem cells. They're meristems. And uh, they differentiate into the different parts of the plant. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple kind of process what happens to the embryo of the plant now there's lots of details i've left out the formation of the different tissues the cotyledons the the formation of a seed and all of these types of things but i'm just doing this basic overview to give you the major differences okay um right the other thing about plants is the embryo pretty much grows steadily it starts growing at fertilization and it pretty much grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And plants essentially keep growing, don't they? They just, they just keep growing. Um, what limits plant growth is usually the environment it's in. If a plant is in a very dry environment or a, a low nutrient environment, it'll grow smaller, grow slower, not as much. But they continue to grow. Even a tree continues to grow. Now, they do sort of reach a sort of equilibrium where where their growth is sort of you know, halted by or, or matched by also um, you know, the, the, they get smaller and smaller, the process of, of decay. It's more of a replacement growth than a getting bigger growth, right? But um, typically, though, you get to a, 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 take a plant, a house plant, you water it, you feed it, it'll just keep on growing. Whereas animals obviously don't do that. We grow to a certain size and then sort of stop and we're in full replacement mode. Our cells do continue to divide, but we're replacing cells rather than adding more cells and, and growing bigger. Okay, so there's the sort of the plant outline. Let's look at the animal one, which is a bit more complicated. Here we go again. A board that is somewhat smart, but not quite smart enough. Okay, let me just go up a little bit more here. There we go. So let's now look at the animal situation. So like the plants, the animals have sperm and egg that come together. And let's go to this, um, this group of cells that have already divided. So we're kind of in the same spot as we started with the plants. Okay. This is sometimes called a marula, this blob of cells. There's a name for every little blob, every little different shape and size. But we're not going to get into all those crazy details. Okay. Now, uh, here's what happens in the animal. I'm going to get my other set of pictures here so I can follow along with these. these are, and I'm going to show you these after too. Uh, what happens is the cells begin to specialize, but they also do something else. They form a, a, a ball with a hole in the middle, a hollow cavity. So the first thing that happens is, un oh, just a minute. Okay, so the, um, what happens is we get, the cells begin to form a sort of space, okay? Um, space or an opening or, or, or a hollowness. And then, uh, the cells begin to specialize. Now, they specialize into different types of cells. We're not going to go into all of the details. Uh, but what happens is um, it forms a sort of a, a, a plate on top, and it begins to what we call, um, it begins to grow inward on itself. Like a, It's like, imagine a ball, and then you poke a hole, you push, and you push the part of the ball inside, and it forms sort of an inner kind of... of um, hole inside the ball, right? I could take a tennis ball or even a softer ball and poke your finger into it. You would get this, this sort of shape. And so eventually what happens is that the shape, um, 
produces an inside and an outside. And what we get is a development of And then the cells themselves also begin to specialize. I'm drawing this quite simple. There, there's a, there's a, as you'll see in the pictures, there's a, a bigger process that happens. But I'm just trying to give you the idea of what's going on. And this is called a gastrulation, right? We call this actually, actually it's called blastulation. We'll call this a blastula. We'll give it a name. This, this uh, ball with a hole in it is called a blastula. So we get the embryo, we get the, uh, sorry, the zygote, right, which is formed. It becomes a big ball of cells and then it begins to turn in on itself and create this hollow hole, which didn't really happen in the plants. The hollow hole goes right through and eventually forms a sort of a tube. Okay, so then we can go down here. Come on, why does it do that every time I touch it once? There we go. We're going to touch the red carefully. Here we go. And so we get this sort of hollow tube being formed. All right. And the inner cells sort of do this in the middle. And so what's essentially happening here is the, the inner digestive tract, right? The, the whole tunnel through our bodies that is our digestive tract is, is being formed. We're taking on the shape of a tube with a hole through the middle rather than a solid mass like the plants are. And so eventually what happens is uh, this stretches and grows. And depending on the type of animal that we're talking about, we get these basically these two layers. And these two layers are called germ layers. And there can be two or three layers. In the picture I've drawn here, we have the red on the outside which is called the ectoderm layer. This will become the ectoderm. And the blue on the inside will become the endoderm. And it's important to realize that the endoderm is forming the gut, the digestive tract, right? Sometimes it's possible that a, a third layer will differentiate and form in between. So now if we have the cells on the outside. Okay, here they are, the ectoderm cells and the endoderm cells, which are forming the inner tube or the gut. And then we can have uh, special cells here in the middle that begin to form. So this would be a third germ layer. This is ectoderm on the outside. Right, the red, the endoderm on the inside, and then the mesoderm is the stuff in the middle. Mesoderm. And these are the three germ layers that form, the three layers of specialized cells. And the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm will then go on to develop into all of the different structures that our bodies are made of. And now, as we'll see, in very primitive animals like the sponge, there's really not any real germ layer at all. The sponge is kind of like a giant blastula. It forms a big opening but that's about as far as it gets. The cells don't really differentiate into anything. So, so sponges are basically a big hollow ball without any organs and they, they function very primitively. And then as we get to some of the higher animals, like, you know, the, the flatworms or the platyhelminthes or whatever, we start to see the, meso or the mesoderm and the endoderm and the ectoderm all being formed. Uh, jellyfish have two germ layers, the nidarians. They don't have mesoderm. So you, the sponges have virtually none. Then you have the nidarians that have two. But then if you keep going, you'll find in some of the flatworms, for instance, they have the actual mesoderm. 
and we'll talk, uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll take a little break here because I promised you that, and then we'll come back and talk about how the mesoderm, endoderm, and ectoderm develop into the other structures, okay? So we'll pause. Okay, we're back. Um, I want to point out um, a couple of things. Because I'm drawing a very simplified version of this, right? It's a very simplified um, picture. It's difficult to show all the different stages, but I do want to show you two key things. The first is the formation of this blastula. So we'll go back up here. Maybe what I'll do is extend this picture around so it makes like a circle, because I was kind of, he I was going too fast there. And so uh, this is called a blastocyst, right, or a blastula. And it's this formation, blastulation, right, that's what this is called. blastulation that's the sort of formation of this little cavity that's the first sort of thing that happens but then a bit later when that cavity sort of pushes in on itself and forms this long tube we call this gastrulation so the process down here uh, let me get to about this point is where we start to see that tube forming um, so, gastrulation. And of course, it's the formation of that inner tube. Um, I could draw about 15 more pictures in between those two steps, but we, this is just introductory bio, so we're just looking at the basic idea. So you should know, overall, if we were to summarize this process, here's what we want to do. We want to realize that the... Um, Let's, let's summarize it with a flow chart. We have a fertilized egg cell, right? Or a zygote. We can just call it a zygote. Develops into a mass of cells. And this is basically just mitotic divisions. Then that mass of cells undergoes uh, the process of blastulation where the blastula forms, so it forms the blastula which has that blastula, that opening in it. Um, now the opening has a name too. Uh, it's called the blastocele. Uh, the word seal, right, let me put this in small letters here, what's beginning to form the blastocele, blue, small. So this this opening for this form is the blastocele, C-O-E-L. The word seal comes from, like coelum, you may have heard of that. It comes from, uh, it means a cavity or an opening. And so that's basically uh, the, the formation of this cavity. So we get two major cavities kind of forming. We get the gastrulation, which forms the, the, uh, the digestive tract down the middle. But we also get this blastula at the beginning, uh, which forms this little cavity. Then we get the prospect of, uh, we get gastrulation. which is the formation uh, of, of the inner tube. Inner tube, instead of just a hole or a space. And then um, what we get is either two germ layers, right, which would be the endo, and ectoderm, or in some cases, we actually get three germ layers, the endo, the meso in the middle, and the ectoderm. So that's basically what I want you to sort of understand in this process. And it's all about the way this blob of cells twists and turns on itself and how the cells become specialized. So the endoderm cells are specializing in a different way than the ectoderm cells or the mesoderm cells. OK? 
Okay. All right. Now let's just talk about these three germ layers. Uh, let's start with the uh, endoderm. The endoderm, the inside, is basically uh, what forms your gut and all of the things in your gut. So endoderm, if we talk about humans, for instance, forms, and here's a list of things that it forms, uh, the pharynx, the esophagus, essentially your digestive tract, esophagus. Uh, small intestine, the intestines, all the intestines, we'll just put intestines, right? The liver, the pancreas. So these important internal organs. Bladder. Uh, the trachea, the bronchi, and the, I'll just put the lungs, essentially. All the lungs are formed from this. Uh, and even the, the parathyroid gland, but what, that's uh, enough. We'll just put etc. So these are the, the internal structures formed from endoderm tissue. Then we have mesoderm tissue in, in those that have three germ layers, like humans. And uh, the mesoderm essentially forms... Another sort of set of structures, but essentially it's muscle. Let's put down muscle. That's a big part of it. That's where our muscles come from. Uh, also some bone and cartilage. This is mesodermal tissue. Um, much of the circulatory system. It's formed from mesoderm. Well, the heart is a muscle in itself, so that kind of makes sense. Um, uh, fat. Fat tissue, which is called adipose tissue. Uh, connective tissue, all that stuff. Uh, let's put connective tissue. Um genitals, urinary tract, the spleen. So a lot of these, and I'll just put etc. Okay. But uh, essentially, we're, we're looking at, you know, if we had to just generally say the, en the endoderm forms the digestive tract primarily. The mesoderm forms your bone and muscles and your circulatory system and so on. And then we have the ectoderm. So we'll slide down here one more time. The ectoderm, which is that outermost tissue. Then you can kind of guess what the ectoderm is going to form. It forms your skin, the outer layers of things, and the things that are sort of uh, on your skin, right? So it forms, let's see here. Well, let's just put skin, the outer ectoderm of your skin. Um, it develops into the uh, hair hair cells, like hair itself is a secretion, but and so are your fingernails, but these all come out of your skin cells, so hair and nails. Uh, interestingly enough, the lens of the eye develops from this tissue. Uh, sebaceous glands, cornea of the eye. Sebaceous glands are glands within the skin. Uh, tooth enamel. And the structures of the mouth and the nose your, your mouth and your nose are places where ectoderm meets endoderm. 
and so is the anus. Remember, the endoderm is your digestive tract. And at some point, the endoderm tissue reaches the end of the hole and connects with the out, outermost tissue, the ectoderm. So your lips, your lips are formed from the formation of endoderm and ectoderm, or the, the connection of those two. And of course, the anus would be the same. And also the nose, which is also uh, part of that endo versus, versus ecto. Okay? And so that's the idea, basically, behind this. And we're going to go through now the different phyla of animals, and we're going to see which ones have no germ layers, or two germ layers, uh, or three germ layers. And we'll look at it sort of from an evolutionary perspective as we build from the simplest sponges up through the different phyla towards uh, chordates and, and humans and so on. Okay, so we'll stop there. That's our sort of introduction to this process. And as I said, I've left out a lot of the steps, but when you go next year, or actually when you go to university, um, you'll take this again in your first or second year, and they will go through all of the details, right? I'm also going to post for you a little video. It's a little Khan Academy, Khan Academy video. And he goes through the same process, but he shows a few of the other steps. So those of you who are kind of like interested in what's going on in between there, we can, we can look at that in a minute. All right, we'll stop there.